what's up, everybody? We're continuing our study in the book of James, chapter 1. Yesterday, we talked about verses 13 and 14, and today we're going to talk about verse 15. But verse 15 is intimately connected to verse 14. So I'll read verse 15, and then I'll back up and read those two verses together. And I'll, maybe the, maybe three of those two verses before, uh, I might just go ahead and read yesterday's verses uh, at the same time. So verse 15 says this. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Powerful. You've heard that quoted, I'm sure, many times. Now let's back up two verses and see how these go together. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God is way above us. No one can dangle anything in front of God and him be the desire to sin. God is incredible. He's powerful. And so not only can he not be tempted to sin, but he doesn't tempt other people to sin. So if you find yourself in a position or if you put yourself in a position that causes you to want to sin or do things that is contrary to the law of God, God didn't do that. You did that. The devil did that. Somebody else besides God, but it was not God. He's not tempted, nor does he tempt people. Verse 14, he said, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And again, we talked yesterday uh, about the fisherman. With, he throws out the, the floater and the hook with the big red worm on it. And he goes down in that water and there's a fish there. And he wants to bite that hook so bad because something on the inside of him wants that worm. It's just he wants it bad. But inside that worm, there's a hook. And that's what the devil does. He dangles stuff in front of us. Sometimes we put our own selves in a bad position, and, and there Satan is. He's, we do it to ourselves. We, we, we can't blame anybody else, but Satan will use our surroundings and situations and people. He'll manipulate them, bring them in our paths, and, and then there's something inside of us that longs for whatever it is that they have to offer. And as soon as we bite that big, juicy red worm, there's a hook in our mouth and we're drawn away. So that we're talking about temptation. God doesn't tempt people to sin. He's not tempted to sin. And when you're tempted to sin, it's because there's something on the inside of you that's not right, longing for something outside of you that's not right. And so we got that. And now we're talking about lust. When lust is drawn away by his own lust. And then we're going to see the repercussions of having lust in our heart. He said, but then when lust hath conceived, when it's, when it's sprung forth, when it's brought to life, you think of conceived, it's a, uh, a word dealing with reproduction. Man and woman, they're intimate, and a child is conceived. And I'll try to be discreet about that. But conception, you know, the child becomes and it grows. Well, it's in, God made me to be attracted to a beautiful woman. God made a man to be attracted to a woman. We're more visual than women, but women are also made to be attracted to a man. It's God. It's a God-ordained thing. It's a beautiful thing. That's why he lets us get married. That's how we, one of the things is how we search out and seek out a woman. We can say whatever we want to. Some of you guys may have been, the first thing that attracted you to your wife or husband was, you know, how nice they were. But I'll be honest, I was attracted to my wife's external um, aesthetic. She was beautiful to me. I was attracted to her. As she was appealing to me, not in a lustful way. I wasn't lusting after her or nothing like that, but she was beautiful to me. And that made me want to know her more. If she had been a bad person, a, you know, hateful, mean, nagging, that sort of thing, I would have not had anything else to do with her because there's so much more depth to this. I mean, that is, beauty, as they say, is just skin deep. So uh, but my point being, I was attracted to her because God made me that way. God did that. But what we're looking at right here is when lust is twisted or perverted, when lust is not harnessed, when lust is not crucified, when lust is not mortified, we mortify the deeds of the body. When lust is not nailed to a tree, the Bible said walk in the spirit that we would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When we don't walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, our flesh becomes strong, meaning our carnal desires, our appetites become powerful. And those things out there that we shouldn't want or the things that we should want, we want to twist them, pervert them, have too much of that or the wrong type of that. You know, in other words, let me do it this way, man or a woman. And there's nothing wrong with a man being attracted to a woman, but when it comes to sex or intimacy, that is forbidden outside of marriage. 
It's against the law. It's against the laws of God. So he gives us the right to marry. And so there's a, a lawful way to do that. So when you find yourself looking at that woman the, the second, third time, you're in trouble. Okay. There's a lot of things that people want acceptance. They want approval. And so they're always looking for approval in other people. They become codependent on people. There is something inside that's not brought into subjection and it causes them to sin. Okay, so it brings forth, it, it shoots roots and it becomes something more powerful, more than just our natural inclination. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. When sin is finished, it brings forth death. So lust, if not handled, brought up underneath the blood, brought up underneath the auspice of power of the spirit, not covered in the word of God, it will cause it to grow stronger and stronger and stronger until you find yourself not just thinking it, but acting it out. You know, so you have lust hath conceived, brings forth a, a child, and that child is sin. And sin, when it is brought forth, the child is death. So the, the grandchild of, of sin, uh, you know, lust is death. That's the, that's the way it happens. That's the process. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth action, sinful action, sinful deeds. And those sins that you're committing is going to cause you to die. Spiritual death. The Bible talks about a physical death. It talks about a second death in the lake of fire. But that second death really is connected to that death of the spirit when you die spiritually. Sin is a powerful thing. And we can pay attention. You know, a lot of folks don't. They are oblivious to anything spiritual. It's just like they're in another world. I don't know why, but the telltale signs are there. When you start feeling yourself drawn towards stuff that you know it's not right or things that you used not be drawn to or things that you used to be drawn to, but God gave you deliverance over. When you feel yourself wanting to look at things, listen to things, hear things, read things, touch things, be with people or whatever it is that you know you shouldn't be. And there's something on the inside pulling, you know, the young lady who was pulled toward alcohol or the party scene, you know, the young man who was pulled toward the woman or the, 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 the husband that's wanting to work another 50 hours a week and he has no time for God and he has no time for his family because greed is pulling at him or he's trying to climb the ladder because promotion and power is pulling at him. There's a thousand different sins that could attract and pull. But when you start feeling the pull of anything that's, that's trying to take you away from Christ, you need to get real serious immediately Find a place to pray. Seek the face of God. Go to God in fasting. Get in, into his word and just, just devour the word of God. Cover yourself up with the spirit of God and give victory over this. Walk in the spirit that you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it's just a very powerful scripture. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. It's nothing to play with. Sin is, is powerful, but the blood of Jesus is more powerful. So again, sin is nothing to play with. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what you would call it. It's not an idiom. It's just an old saying that sin will take you farther than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay and make you pay more than you can afford. Sin is powerful. But bless God, the blood of Jesus is much more powerful. So I want you to think about these things. And if you feel yourself slipping, get serious about it because you're in a very dangerous place. All right. The ultimate end of what you're doing is going to be death and you're going to end up in a lake of fire and I don't want you to do that because Jesus paid the ultimate price for you he loves you so good and so much and, and the blood of Jesus is so powerful his death brother and resurrection is so powerful in fact you know John said that if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sins and so in order for you to even be washed in the blood you have to turn toward him and begin your journey into the light. Once you're in that light, and God is that light, the Father of lights, all right, you have fellowship with him in that light. We also have fellowship with each other, but that text, I believe the immediate context is that fellowship with God and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses me of all my sins, every sin, all sins. So 
If you find yourself wanting to turn toward darkness, don't do it. Keep walking in the light. Repent. Ask God to forgive you. He'll forgive you of your sins. Wash them away. Pardon those sins. And you will not have to deal with this, um, you know, lust is conceived, brings forth sin, sin is finished, bring forth death. That digression, you can cancel that out in the name of Jesus. All right. I hope this helped you. May God bless you on this beautiful day. I'll talk to you later.